everybody, it's your pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, and I'm here to drop the bomb. The uh, X Lights folks have released 2022.8, and I know, I know, I missed out on dot seven, but you know. I've got business to take care of, and I just knew Dot Eight was going to be better, and it is. Now there are a few little things that might happen in Dot Eight, so be careful. Will it crash? Yep, it will. Uh, if you're playing in the layout, it might just crash on you. Yep, don't worry, it will. Uh, but be patient. Um, this is the great time of year where the developers get to enhance, create efficiencies, add new effects, all these wonderful things that we will benefit throughout the entire season. So, uh, you know, be patient. Here's what I'm going to talk about today in .8. Uh, there are a lot of things that uh, the devs have been busy with. So I've highlighted a few key ones that I think are important. Uh, I don't understand every one of these because, you know, nobody does. Only the developers do. Only they do. But anyway, we'll talk about the music effect. Uh, the music slash piano, I'm assuming that's uh, better music effect and piano effect for the horizontal scaling. I don't know. Uh, I didn't see a difference, but, uh, you know, what do I know? We'll talk about some of these others as well. Uh, update effects, search, uh, Scott's been busy. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin's being a player here. Uh, we'll talk about this a, a fairly in depth, but we won't kill it because there's more work that's gonna be done on it, I am sure. Uh, and if you have a Mac, uh, it may not play ball right now, and I'll explain what that means. And Dan is fully aware. Um, we will also look at some things that Dan did as a result of attending my X Lights class at the Florida Mega Mini that uh, will pay off in dividends, which I think is super cool. We'll talk about some tag colors. We'll talk about selecting timings with one click, which I think is awesome. It's going to help me quite a bit in what I do. Uh, make sure you read through all the lists and uh, reach out to the, de uh, the developers uh, if you have any questions on what some of this stuff might mean. They might just get back to you. You never know. Now, they are busy. They have their own lives, and they put a lot of time and energy into this stuff. So be awfully appreciative and thankful. That's always a good thing. And the last one here, we'll talk about this uh, fixed image model transparency, which I don't think really impacted what I was doing, but I'll try to, uh, in the best way I can, explain what this is and might have been and, and that it's not an issue anymore. All right, let's get started with this whole music effect. And I'm, I'm taking a gamble that this is what it is. It may not be. Uh, this is one of my new sequences I hope to release this week. Um, uh, it's called Taking Care of Christmas. It's uh, from uh, BTO, or actually the lead singer of BTO. And it's a really fun, upbeat song. And I use the music effect on this to be triggering some guitar licks uh, as they hit based on the start note and end note. And I didn't notice a difference uh, in this, but, you know, this is vertical, it's not horizontal, so of course I'm not going to see it. It's supposed to be on the impact of horizontal scaling. Well, I'm doing it wrong already, so whatever. Anyway, so that was that. So let's get to the next little section. And this has to do with the new sketch effect. I think Kevin knocked it out of the park with this. I think this is just going to make 2D path, um, you know, uh, ready to remove from x -Lights. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but I will tell you, it is pretty, pretty cool to work with. A couple of things in here. Now you see this is the default. And what you should do is watch Kevin's videos. Turn up the volume all the way, opposite of what you do with me, because I don't know if his mic isn't working or he's just very soft spoken, really hard to hear what he's saying. So just turn up the mic and then remember to turn it down or the speakers that is and then turn it down. Um, watch the effect demo. And then that was about a week or two older. And then the new sketch tracing demo was just done a couple days ago. And he will cover everything you pretty much need to know about this. Then you can get in and start playing with it. When you want to start doing your own, uh, again, when you see this video, it'll explain this. Uh, you need to be able to see one of the windows. You need the effects assist window or you can't play with this. That's it. And you can drag a slider up and down. You can zoom in. You can zoom out. I wish it would zoom out more. I wish we could double click on this, you know, the same way we can double click on this 
to toggle back and forth between uh, how large the file is and how small the uh, viewing area that is is, and uh, but at least we have this. Uh, the other thing is you, you got to scroll down to see all the menus. And because I'm recording this in HD and Dolby, uh, we're at the mercy of real estate. So anyway, uh, he does a really good job of explaining in the verbiage here what things do. And I have one path that I have drawn. I had to freehand this because right now the browse button uh, does not allow me to choose the images. They're sort of just... Uh, uh, they don't highlight the JPEG, give uh, uh, PNG, none of those images right now on the Mac side will work. I'm sure they do on the Windows side and they'll get that all ironed out. No big deal. Uh, but I really do like this. Uh, I think it's going to be neat bringing in things. Uh, I can start a new path if I want. Let's see, do that path one. Let's see, that's my path one. And I don't want to hit clear. I just want to go up here and I've got a blank slate so I can just click somewhere, click again. If I hold down the shift key all of, and hit my escape, all of these I can modify. I can make my sad face because my images uh, don't work right now. I can make a happy face because I know soon they will. And I think this is pretty cool. This makes outline. If 2D Path had this, whoo, that would have been wonderful. Uh, but this is a completely different tool set. And what I have now is a whale, a hungry whale eating. See that, folks? That's why I get paid the big bucks, because I've got that creative mind. One hungry well. Anyway, I think this is a great tool. Kevin, hats off to you on this. There's so much more that this can do. The whole motion of how quickly it will draw itself, uh, the thickness of the line, as you can see, we make the line thicker and thicker, and I should probably tell this to uh, uh, start. There we go. There we go, beautiful, beautiful. There's my path, and now I can change the thickness of this. That's a thin line, make it very thick, the draw percentage, uh, all these are really cool. So make sure you do watch these videos. I think they're very informative, and I look forward to messing around with this. Uh, so thank you, and I, I, I hate you at the same time, because this is just maybe going to take me longer as I go through the creative process and creating sequences. So yeah, mostly thank you. All right, let's move on. Let's get out of the whale's way and talk about the polyline, polyline tool. Okay, and we're also going to talk about the remove models from groups. I think these are pretty cool. Uh, in your layout, whoo, we got this. Uh, I can create a polyline, and this happened in my class. So you keep clicking and clicking and clicking, and if you don't stop clicking, it just keeps making these things go, right? And so we train everybody, hit the escape key, and people says, well, why can't we just hit return key? And Dan goes, well, okay, wh what keys would you like to hit? And they're like, oh, the enter key. And so now if I hit enter, uh, it's done. It's done. So you can use the escape key or enter to uh, stop it. Now, just stop it. I, I want to delete it. Okay. And if you can't delete it from there, you can always just hold down your shift key in the 3D world and select it. Oh, 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 look at, oh, okay, there we go. Delete, thank you. So that was really cool for Dan to uh, take uh, some feedback from the class and make a change literally in five minutes in the code and it was sort of done. The other one that came up was about groups. Wouldn't it be cool if in a group, we don't want to necessarily delete one of the canes, but maybe we want to remove that cane from the group. So now you can right click and remove model from group. So that is brand new, remove model from group. Uh, I don't know that this is necessarily working at the submodel group. He's aware of that and that will be changed so that you can also remove uh, submodels such as if you didn't want uh, this section of arms to be in it, you could right click and remove those from the group without deleting the submodel. You don't want to delete the models and submodels unless you really plan on removing it from your show. Okay, let's continue on. Here we go. Add tag color to model group. 
This is an interesting one, and I sort of really, really like it. Um, there's a new feature right here, uh, and I would call this an, uh, an enhancement for efficiency, and that is to be able to assign a tag color to various groups. And what I like about this is that I have an all pixels group and all pixels with no mega tree matrix and all pixels group, no yard and a, a couple others. Um, I have now assigned these different colors so that when I am sequencing and I'm going to put a whole house effect on maybe just all pixels or just all pixels group, no mega tree, no matrix or all pixels group, no yard, there's a reference point based on color. And I sort of like that because it's pretty easy to inadvertently put the wrong effect in the wrong group because they're similar. So hats off for that. I really appreciate that. I think it's pretty cool. Then we get into select all timing events using right click on the timing track. Uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, it is very often that I will create custom timing tracks. And usually what I'd have to do is select all of these and then I would copy and then I would paste. Um, what you can do now, and I'm still trying to figure out if this is something that's going to help me, is you can right click and copy row, which I don't think for timings was there before. So if you were going to have a secondary sequence that had some changes to it, you might save it as a different file and you wanted to copy and paste uh, effects, the, I'm sorry, the timings from one to the other, uh, you can certainly do that by copying the row. You can do that also with any effect. I mean, you can model, uh, copy the row. Let me see if I get this right, model copy effects, which is cool. Uh, I wish we could copy the entire group of effects. I don't think it'll do it at the group level, but that would be really cool if we could do that. But anyway, <clears throat> I do think that's pretty cool. Otherwise, what you have to do is select these, then you can do your command control C copy and then just go over here and paste it and now I have pasted the same one over there. I'll hit Control Z because I don't really want that there. And so that's kind of a cool, interesting thing. So play around with it. The next one and the last one on here is going to be the fix image model transparency issues. Make sure not dark on layout panel. And so uh, Dan had sent me over the GitHub notes on that and I was trying to understand what that was about. I don't really use uh, this a ton. Uh, there are some projects I'll work on where they have AC lights, a blow mold, a blow up thing that they want to include in the show and have it turn on uh, when the show starts or have effects do certain things with it such as twinkle or fades, you know, the ramps or just simply turn on and off as part of the x Lights show. And x Lights is fully capable of working with just about anything out there. So if I click on this, you'll see that it right now belongs to no controller. If I wanted to change the brightness of it just in the layout, that's easy enough. I go to my transparency until I want it to be 75%. I don't think that was what was going on. I think something was happening uh, in the sequence area uh, where they might have put an effect on it. And let's see if I can, there we go. Let me, oh, San, Santa's gonna give everybody a seizure. Santa, turn off your shimmer, please. Thank you. So I have a ramp on here. I guess what was happening is, depending on what you were doing with the brightness levels here, it was somehow impacting something over here, and I'm sure Dan will correct me on this, but anyway, whatever the issue might have been since dot two uh, is no longer an issue. So that's it, folks. Um, dot eight has crashed on me a couple times. Uh, I've sent the uh, files to Dan to take a look at to see what might be doing it. Anytime you have new features like a brand new effect added, uh, I and who, there's no we don't know if it's this or not. Don't know. Don't know. Um, that could be part of the culprit. It could be anything else. There was a lot done in dot eight. So be patient. 
uh, send those reports in when you have them and uh, have fun with this. Uh, I'm gonna be sequencing with this today, so I'll let you know if I have any issues. The crashes I had were not when messing with any of the sequences, it was when I was messing in the layout, and that's where it was crashing. So anyway, you guys have a fine week, and we'll catch up soon. Mm -hmm.